Today we are reviewing and testing the Ninja Foodi Digital Air Fry Oven. It's a mouthful. And comparing a few features with our old and sad Black & Decker toaster oven that's been used so much it's virtually impossible to clean. So don't judge. One of the main reasons we bought the Ninja Foodi was because it was also an air fryer. We've been wanting to get one for years, but because of their cost and their hugeness, it just seemed silly to have another big machine on the countertop that did one thing. So this was the perfect opportunity to roll eight functions into one appliance. Just a quick note, we are not sponsored in any way by any appliance company or brand. We're not that popular. Now, there are five tests we're gonna be doing today. The toast test, the temperature test, pizza test, dehydrator test, and we're gonna be comparing the baking and the air fry functions in the Ninja Foodi. First, let's see what's included in the box. Of course, we have our manual, uh, an additional tips and tricks booklet, along with a handy infographic pamphlet. Then we have the star of the show, the Foodi oven itself, with a warning to not touch hot surfaces. I have to say, I actually really like the slim look and the rounded corners of this compared to the boxiness of the Black & Decker. Inside we have our air fry basket, our wire rack, crumb tray, which appears super easy to slide in and out. And what do we have here? Let's see, our sheet pan. For all those sheet pan mills everyone seems to be obsessed with right now. Let's take a look at some of the standout features. First, the elephant in the room. When I first saw that the Ninja made a toaster oven slash air fryer and it flipped up and down, I was afraid it was just going to be a gimmick. But let me tell you, it's awesome for our kitchen. While we probably have more counter space than other people, I use a lot of it, especially when I do cooking videos. So the fact that I can more than double counter space when the Ninja's not in use is a huge plus. It does, however, take up more space width-wise since most toaster ovens aren't that wide, but I think that's a plus because that means it's larger on the inside, so more food. For your numbers people, the interior dimensions are 13 inches wide with 13 and a quarter inch depth, and it can fit just under three inches of food height at its lowest rack position. Also, because of this flip feature, it's a lot easier to clean. If you take out all the racks and the crumb tray inside, you can open the bottom slash front and get to the very back of the oven, which would usually be a little harder to get to. Like I mentioned before, the Ninja Foodi oven has eight functions, which are air fry, air roast, air broil, bake, dehydrate, toast, bagel, and keep warm. The Black & Decker pales in comparison with just four functions. All right, so let's start with our first test, the temperature test. I wanna see how fast these ovens get to their temperature and I want to get a baseline so I know that the food tests later on are going to be on equal footing. So we'll be setting both of them to 425. Let's start first with the Ninja. After one minute, it tells us it's preheated, which as the manual warns us is super quick, so you want to make sure your food is on hand pretty much from the beginning. However, as you see from the freestanding thermometer, it's nowhere near 425. Now, I know these types of thermometers can be a bit slow with their reading sometimes, and before you ask, I did calibrate it beforehand, so we're going to see if we have these same results over the Black & Decker. But, as for the Ninja, after 7 minutes and 35 seconds, we're finally showing the correct temperature. Since the Black & Decker is old AF and doesn't have a digital face, we're going to set the dial to 425 and see how long this one takes to get there. And we finally run into our first problem. The thermometer stalls around 400, and after some tinkering with the dial, we find out that the Black & Decker is approximately 60 to 70 degrees off, which, if any of you are regular viewers to our channel, know this ain't nothing compared to our old oven. Holy shit. It's a whole 100 degrees higher than it's supposed to be. So, after cooling down and starting the test again with the next dial position of 490, we get to the correct temperature in the Black & Decker after 7 minutes and 16 seconds which essentially makes this a tie, if we go by the thermometer. However, if the Ninja truly preheats in one minute, we're gonna have to claim Ninja the winner. And after having owned this for a few months now, we can definitively say we've never had any issues with our food turning out soggy or not cooking through properly. I think it really does just preheat extremely fast. Our next test is one of everyone's favorite foods, pizza. But I have to admit, I don't think I've ever cooked pizza in a toaster oven before. 
So we're going to do it for the first time right here. One of the great features of the Ninja is how large it is inside. A 9 inch frozen pizza fits perfectly in the Black & Decker, if not just barely, while the same pizza fits rather comfortably in the Ninja, with room to spare. I set both of these to the correct temperature and cooked them exactly for 15 minutes, which was the minimum time on the pizza box. So first, let's take a look at the Ninja results. Though it could have stood to be in there a little longer, it's almost fully cooked for the minimum recommended cook time. A lot of the cheese is melted, the crust has gotten a bit browner, and the bottom of the pizza is nice and firm, like it should be. Over at Black & Decker Palace, for the same amount of time, the cheese has barely begun to melt, and the crust is, well, something to be desired. So the Ninja definitely wins the pizza test. Also, one extra feature that's helpful and just kinda cute is the light turns on around 30 seconds before it's set to end, which might be helpful if you want to grab a plate or yell at your family that dinner's ready. Toast is one of those things which you would hope a toaster oven could do well, right? Well, we're gonna put that to the test right now. In a standard toaster oven, you're lucky if you can fit six slices in there and even luckier if they toast evenly. With the Ninja Foodie, you can feed an army of toast lovers by toasting up to nine slices at once. As for the quality, let's take a look. I set both the Black & Decker and the Ninja to their respective medium darkness levels, and the results were pretty astounding. The Black & Decker toasted haphazardly and not one of the slices matched another one. Not one! They all toasted completely differently, which is not at all what you want when you're going for just basic consistency. The Ninja, on the other hand, toasted like a dream. I mean, just look at those. It toasted each of the nine slices, no matter where they were in the oven, to almost perfection. So I would be crazy not to crown Ninja the toast master, and I would be even crazier to keep comparing the two, because the Ninja is clearly far superior. But. I am curious how some of the other features work in the Ninja itself, so let's take a look. Keeping with the breakfast theme we have going on, I want to see what the bagel function can do. Now, one of the first instructions they give you when cooking bagels is to put them cut side up, which to me just seems backward and abnormal. Per the manual, the bagel function heats the bottom just slightly hotter than the top, which means the exterior of your bagels will be just a bit crispier while leaving the inside a bit more chewy. And after thinking about it like that, it kind of makes sense. But if you don't prefer your bagels that way, just do the opposite. Either way, a toasted fine made for a great morning. The next two functions are probably the things you're going to be using this the most for, baking and air frying. In fact, air frying is really the main reason we picked this model, so I'm anxious to see it in action. We decided to test it on fries. They recommend spraying the basket with cooking spray, but I skipped this step and had no issues with the fries sticking. The air function is a bit different than baking in that it essentially functions as a convection oven. The oven sets to a high heat from top and bottom, and the fan turns on high, which makes for a high heat throughout going in between every fry. The end product gives a really nice crispy exterior. Do watch the air function though, because it can burn your food fast. They recommend flipping the basket halfway through, and I suggest going with the minimum recommended fry time at first. And that's the great thing about this cute booklet that accompanies the manual. It actually tells you times and temps for the common foods you would want to air fry, so there's no guessing there. And while we're at it, is there really a difference between the air frying and baking functions on the Ninja? Because you really can't have too many fries, let's bake some too. Similar to air frying, the baking function does use high heat on the top and bottom, but there's no fan on, so the end result leaves you with fries that aren't nearly as crispy as air fried would, while still giving you a nice light browning. There really is a difference, so it all depends on what kind of mood you're in. The last function we're going to test is one that you'll probably never use, but I've always wanted to try it, so let's dehydrate stuff. I've always loved the tartness of Granny Smith apple chips, so I picked up a couple apples and I turned to my trusty booklet to see if I could recreate those. All right, let's take a look. Apples cut 1 8 inch slices, 135 degrees. Seven to eight hours? Ugh. Now I know why no one dehydrates things. You know what, what else do I have going on? Let's do it.
Seven hours later and we finally have our beautifully dehydrated apple slices. And while they're delicious and everything I hoped for, I can easily eat all of these in five minutes. Since you're only supposed to put one layer of food in the basket, you have a minimal amount of real estate to work with. And I'm not sure it's worth seven to eight hours of dehydrating for such a small payoff. I guess you could set it and forget it since it's such a low temperature, but I don't think I would ever feel safe leaving home with an oven on, no matter how low it is. So while these turned out delicious and the dehydrating function worked great, I'm not sure I would ever say this is a usable feature. If you were able to put more than one layer, maybe, or maybe I should just learn moderation when eating apple chips, but that's no fun. What is fun though, is cooking with a toaster oven that actually works. Our old toaster oven just didn't retain heat or cook evenly as evidenced by the tests we just did. Simply put, the Ninja is a workhorse. It does everything, and it does everything well. I truly thought this was gonna be a gimmicky appliance from a popular brand that was just trying to capitalize on their name, and they proved me wrong. So if you're in the market for a new toaster oven that does a bit more than toast, or an air fryer that does more than air fry, it's well worth your money. All right, y'all, I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit a thumbs up, I would love you for it. And make sure to subscribe, share, and comment, and all that good stuff. I'll see y'all next time.